Hi everyone, this is a quick uh, introductory video, a quick getting started video of uh, how you can surface data, rich um, search driven analytics uh, from Elasticsearch and uh, pull that into R for further analysis. So again, this is just a quick getting started video. Um, so R itself uh, has a couple of different ways that you can interface with uh, Elasticsearch. Um, so there's the uh, JSON route that you can take directly calling the Elasticsearch API or uh, you that's again option number one or the other option is to actually use uh, one of the libraries um, that we now have uh, using which you can directly uh, invoke uh, the APIs uh, of Elastic. So in the video we'll take a look at both these two options. Um, so starting off with um, the JSON option itself. So if you're not familiar with how Elasticsearch works, um, the REST API, just uh, keeping in mind that uh, using R, uh, we can call the APIs, the JSON APIs directly. So here are a few examples. So uh, if, um, uh, if you're not familiar with how the URL syntax works, this is the name of the uh, server, Elasticsearch server, and the default port, or the IP here. This is the index. So in my case, I'm, I'm using Logstash to pull data from Twitter and storing it into an index called BD Tweets or Big Data Tweets. Uh, and here the syntax we're just uh, issuing a count. So I've got Logstash running in uh, in the background, so the actual count uh, keeps uh, increasing. Uh, so as you can see, that's a simple uh, URL uh, to retrieve data from um, uh, Elasticsearch, so really simple API. Uh, but we, we can uh, query other more interesting parameters like say for example the tweets itself if we wanted to uh, search for some content so here uh, it's the same index and uh, if I wanted to search for all the content uh, with uh, against the keyword big data so uh, this is how you do that uh, again we can change it to ascending order, descending order, do some further filtrations etc uh, so instead of big data say analytics if I search for analytics, for example, uh, here's the data set and various others. So, did I get the spelling correct? Analytics, yep. Uh, surprisingly, there was one with a false uh, spelling mistake. Huh, interesting. Anyway, uh, so uh, that's another example. And then finally, if you wanted to retrieve a specific tweet for example like say in this particular case I know the ID of a tweet and if I wanted to retrieve specifically if I knew the ID in advance uh, so here's a quick example so here it's uh, the index uh, the type which um, uh, saving it as logs and finally the same ID itself so I just uh, as an example maybe let me just copy this ID since we have it here and uh, you know, just paste that there and here you can see that uh, that's um, one single tweet that we have retrieved. So that's just a quick overview of uh, how you can query uh, the Elastic um, uh, content uh, through the REST API. Um, Elastic have a much more complex and advanced uh, uh, DSL for querying their data and uh, making updates to the index. But that's uh, immediately outside of the scope of uh, this video. Now that we've seen how we can query the data, we can uh, you know replicate that using R. So as I mentioned, there are probably two options. So option one is if you directly wanted to use JSON data, uh, retrieve the data as a REST API. Uh, we'll take a look at that and then we'll take a look at the actual package itself. So here I've included the required uh, libraries. And here all we're doing is um, we are retrieving the data using R curl. Uh, so it's the same. URI that I used earlier and um, then we'll convert that um, and, uh, to JSON and display that information so here yeah, count so finally if we take a look at count um, so sure enough it's uh, the same data set uh, I'm sorry it's the same results that we're getting so we have um, north of uh, 50,000 um, uh, rows of uh, data so that's an example of how we could invoke that using the REST API directly. The other option is to install this package that's uh, Elastic. It allows for us to work with uh, the API in a much more simpler way. Uh, so once you've uh, installed it, let's just uh, add the library. And here, um, again, keep in mind, I'm connecting to a remote machine. It's not the same machine as uh, 
the R studio that I have running. So if I don't specify this parameter, it will use local system. If not, it'll, um, it will, it's uh, going to, um, you know, you can specify a different host name and if uh, your port number is a different port, then you will need to specify that as well. Um, we can retrieve the data. In this particular case, I'm uh, retrieving the count. If you're wondering why the counts are different, uh, here I've um, got the entire count for all the indexes. Um, so that assumes that if I didn't specify this logs here, so just to prove it, um, yeah. I've got, apart from uh, uh, BD tweets, I've got a few other, um, um, just give me a second, a few BD tweets, oh, let me get rid of that too, sorry. Uh, so if I retrieve the counts there, uh, so here you can see it's um, somewhere around 63k, so uh, it's the same thing here. So if I don't specify a count, it gives me um, the count across um, uh, all the indexes, so I can specify uh, an individual index here. So um, looking at uh, the API itself or the library here, so this is a quick example of how we can do um, uh, search against the keyword uh, big data so that's the result set that we can get we can specify the, the number of records uh, again the default the maximum default um, when you install Elasticsearch is uh, 10,000 but uh, you can change that that might be okay if you're just trying to do an ad hoc analysis as opposed to um, an end user trying to hit the search uh, again for CPU and various other resources and if you did know the ID as I showed you in the REST API, so here you can see a quick example of how you can retrieve um, based on uh, an individual ID or if you have multiple IDs, um, you can retrieve that data. I would think that this is uh, you know, not exactly what you might be after, uh, particularly when you're trying to do um, analysis with an R. Uh, yeah, chances are you will be using the search interface most likely. Um, but uh, even this uh, data that you're getting here might uh, might be uh, difficult to work with at times. So, uh, which is why um, I mostly still try to uh, retrieve the data uh, using this library, but uh, still save the uh, or retrieve the data in JSON format. Uh, so, if you pass a raw parameter equals true, it'll send the data back as a, a JSON input. Uh, or oh, JSON output, sorry. So here it becomes a lot easier to work with. It's um, kind of like a table-like structure. Um, so uh, let's just um, use this as an example. So if I retrieve this data here, uh, you can see that's the raw um, raw data. But uh, when we convert that to JSON, and let's just take a look at the bar. And a bar of, uh, let's say, let's say, take a look at, uh, oops. All right, so here uh, you can see that that's basically the search results set. There's uh, quite a lot of columns there, but um, as an example, if uh, uh, we can just use this command here just to get all the columns. So you may remember from um, the Elasticsearch uh, results set that we received, so pretty much access to all of these uh, values and attributes. So if we go back to our studio, so here we see all the various um, columns of information. So let's say you wanted to do some text analytics with an R um, and you're only interested in the messages that correspond to big data. So you can run a quick command here and um, give me all the 12. Uh, you'll notice that um, it's 12 because uh, we have filtered it for 12. Uh, it could have been 1,000, for example. So let's just change that to 1,000. And there. Yeah. So here you go. So that's all the data uh, from Elasticsearch. So again, you can see some great benefits of storing all of that raw data um, inside of Elasticsearch and using the Search API of Elasticsearch to pull data, uh, bring that into R. And now that it's in R, we can do some uh, further analysis onto that data, uh, do some sentiment analysis, do uh, other text analysis. So not just text, if you're looking at metrics itself, um, there's quite a lot of uh, strength, of course, within R. If you want to do predictive analytics, etc., all that's uh, now in the hands of R. So that's a quick video to showcase how you can pull data from Elasticsearch and bring that into R. Hope you like the video. Do like and subscribe. Thanks, everyone.